Imagine flying a World War II aircraft at full throttle. The engine is strong, the structure is reinforced, and the design looks flawless. Yet, as the speed rises, the wings begin to vibrate violently. Pilots described it as the airplane shaking itself apart in the sky. Many never made it back. Engineers tried thicker metal, stronger spars, and more power, but nothing worked. The problem wasn't the engine, it wasn't the materials, it was the invisible physics of how wings move through the air. One man solved it, not with force, but with equations. His name was Theodore Theodorson, the engineer who made high-speed flight safe. Theodore Theodorson was born in Norway in 1897 and later immigrated to the United States, where he pursued engineering at a time when aviation was transitioning from experimental flight to scientific aerodynamics. He studied mechanical engineering and applied mathematics, disciplines that would later define his analytical approach to aerodynamic stability and structural behavior. By the early 20th century, aircraft development had accelerated rapidly, especially during and after World War I. Airframes were becoming larger and faster, but the scientific understanding of aerodynamic forces on flexible structures remained incomplete. Engineers could predict lift and drag for steady flight, yet they lacked reliable models for how airloads behaved when wings and control surfaces oscillated in motion. This gap in knowledge created serious risks, as aircraft began operating closer to structural and aerodynamic limits. After completing his education, Theodorson joined the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, the primary US government organization responsible for advancing aeronautical research. At NACA's Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory, he became involved in the study of aerodynamic forces acting on wings and airfoils undergoing unsteady motion. This area of research was essential because aircraft were no longer rigid bodies, as speeds increased, wings began to flex, twist, and vibrate under aerodynamic pressure. At the time, most aerodynamic analysis treated airflow as a steady phenomenon. Lift and drag were calculated for fixed wing angles and constant speeds. However, aircraft in flight experienced dynamic conditions. Gusts, maneuvers, and control inputs produce oscillatory motion. These oscillations change the pressure distribution across the wing, which in turn alters the aerodynamic forces. Without a mathematical framework to describe this behavior, engineers could not accurately predict how aircraft would respond under real operating conditions. Theodorsen's work focused on solving this exact problem. He approached unsteady aerodynamics using mathematical tools drawn from fluid dynamics and complex analysis. Rather than relying on empirical adjustments, he developed theoretical models capable of describing the time-dependent relationship between wing motion and aerodynamic force generation. One of the central challenges was determining how an oscillating airfoil interacts with the surrounding airflow. When a wing moves up and down or changes angle, it does not instantly reach a new aerodynamic equilibrium. The air requires time to adjust, producing delayed pressure effects and vortex formation in the wake. These effects are directly linked to stability because they determine whether the motion damps out or grows into dangerous vibration. Theodorson formalized this behavior by deriving what became known as Theodorson's function, a mathematical expression that relates oscillatory airfoil motion to the resulting lift and moment coefficients this function provided engineers with a predictive model for aerodynamic loads under dynamic conditions. It allowed for accurate calculation of forces on wings and control surfaces undergoing harmonic motion, a breakthrough in the design of stable and controllable aircraft. Beyond lift prediction, his research established a clear link between aerodynamics and structural dynamics aircraft wings could no longer be analysed independently from the forces acting on them. Theodorsen's work laid the scientific foundation for aeroelasticity, the field that studies how aerodynamic forces and structural flexibility interact. 
This research became especially important as aircraft began encountering flutter, a phenomenon where aerodynamic forces amplify structural vibration rather than suppress it. Flutter was not simply a structural problem, it resulted from a feedback loop between the airflow and the wing's elastic properties. Without the tools, Developed by Theodorsen, flutter remained unpredictable and often catastrophic. By the late 1930s, Theodorsen's mathematical models were being used throughout NACI's research programs and by American aircraft manufacturers. His work enabled engineers to analyse stability margins, control effectiveness and structural safety using quantitative methods instead of trial and error testing. This marked a turning point in aviation engineering, where theoretical aerodynamics became a practical design instrument rather than a purely academic discipline. Theodorsen's contribution did not produce a single aircraft or component. It produced the scientific principles that made advanced aircraft design possible. His research gave engineers the ability to predict how aerodynamic forces evolve in time and how those forces influence structural behaviour in flight. That capability would become essential for every high-speed aircraft developed in the decades that followed. As aircraft entered higher speed regimes during the late 1930s and early 1940s, engineers encountered a critical structural limitation that could not be solved through material strength alone, aeroelastic flutter. Unlike simple vibration, Flutter was a self-exciting instability, produced by the interaction between aerodynamic forces and the elastic deformation of the wing. Once initiated, the oscillations grew rapidly and could destroy an aircraft in seconds. Before systematic research, Flutter was treated as an unpredictable hazard. Aircraft designers reinforced wings, adjusted control surfaces or limited operational speed but these solutions addressed symptoms rather than the underlying mechanism. A scientific method was required to explain how aerodynamic loading, mass distribution and structural stiffness combined to determine whether an aircraft remained stable in flight. Theodorsen's primary focus during this period was the mathematical prediction and prevention of flutter. His work at NACA transformed flutter from an empirical problem into an engineering discipline governed by quantifiable parameters. Instead of asking how to strengthen the wing, he asked how to ensure that aerodynamic forces acted in a way that naturally damped oscillations rather than amplified them. One of his key contributions was identifying the dynamic coupling between bending and torsion in aircraft wings. A wing does not simply move up and down under load, it also twists along its span. At certain speeds, the aerodynamic center shifts relative to the elastic axis, causing lift forces to create torsional motion. This torsion modifies the angle of attack, which in turn increases lift, producing a feedback loop that leads to destructive oscillation. To analyze this effect, Theodorsen developed a two degree of freedom aeroelastic model that treated the wing as an elastic beam, subject to both bending and twisting. By expressing aerodynamic loads as functions of oscillation, frequency, he enabled engineers to calculate the precise flight speeds at which flutter would occur. This was the first time that aircraft stability could be evaluated analytically rather than experimentally. His models demonstrated that flutter was governed by the relationship between three fundamental properties. One, structural stiffness, the wing's resistance to bending and torsion. Two, mass distribution, how weight was concentrated along the span. Three, aerodynamic loading. How airflow forces varied with velocity and motion. This framework allowed aircraft designers to modify wing geometry and balance rather than simply increasing structural strength. It also made it possible to predict whether design changes would improve or degrade stability before the aircraft ever flew. Another major development from his research was the introduction of mass balancing and aerodynamic damping techniques. Theodorsen showed that by redistributing weight or adjusting the location of control surfaces, 
engineers could alter the oscillatory behavior of the wing and shift flutter onset beyond operational flight speeds. This was especially important for aircraft carrying large external loads or operating in turbulent environments. His work was applied directly to American wartime aircraft. Napier's flutter analysis programs used Theodorson's equations to refine the wing structures of bombers, fighters and transport aircraft. Instead of limiting aircraft speed for safety, engineers could now design wings that remained stable throughout their performance envelope. This increased reliability, reduced structural failures and improved operational confidence during long-range missions. Theodorson's flutter research also changed how wind tunnel experiments were conducted. Models were no longer tested only for lift and drag. They were tested for dynamic stability, with instrumentation designed to measure oscillation frequencies and pressure variations under airflow. This created a new class of aerodynamic testing focused on structural response rather than static performance. Beyond immediate wartime applications, his work established the foundations for modern aeroelastic design standards. Post-war aircraft, particularly high-performance jets, relied on flutter prediction methods that traced directly back to his NACA formulations. The idea that an aircraft's wing could be engineered for stability through mathematical modelling became a permanent principle in aerospace engineering. Theodorson's contribution, therefore, went far beyond theory. He provided the first systematic way to ensure that aircraft structures remained stable under dynamic aerodynamic forces. By doing so, he enabled aviation to operate safely at speeds and load factors that had previously been considered structurally impossible. His work did not simply improve aircraft design. It made high-speed flight predictable, repeatable and survivable. By the time World War II reached its most demanding phase, aircraft no longer failed only because of structural weakness or engine limitations. They failed because they were operating in aerodynamic regimes that engineers could not yet model in real time. High speed flight, heavy wing loading and extreme maneuvers produced complex oscillations that pilots could feel, but engineers could not fully quantify aircraft were approaching the limits of stability long before they approached the limits of power. Theodorson's work addressed this gap directly. He demonstrated that a wing in motion is not governed by static lift laws. It is governed by how the surrounding airflow reacts to that motion over time. This meant that lift was no longer just a function of angle of attack. It became a function of history. How fast the wing was pitching, how rapidly it was accelerating, and how the wake behind it evolved all contributed to the forces acting on it. Without accounting for these transient effects, aircraft design was effectively blind in dynamic flight conditions. His solution was not to simplify these effects, but to formalize them. Theodorson developed what became known as the unsteady aerodynamic transfer function for lifting surfaces. This function linked a wing's instantaneous motion to the delayed aerodynamic response produced by its own wake. In practical terms, it allowed engineers to predict the actual aerodynamic forces on a wing undergoing oscillation rather than assuming idealized steady state behavior. This was essential for analyzing and preventing phenomena such as flutter, divergence and structural vibration at high speed. This contribution transformed aircraft safety. Before this work, flutter was treated as an unpredictable risk. Wings and control surfaces could enter violent oscillations with no clear warning, often resulting in structural failure. After Theodorson's formulation, flutter became something that could be analyzed mathematically and prevented through design. Engineers could adjust stiffness, mass distribution, and control surface geometry with confidence knowing exactly how those choices would influence dynamic stability. This capability was decisive during the war. Aircraft were flying faster, carrying more weight, and performing maneuvers that would have been impossible a decade earlier. Under these conditions, dynamic stability was not optional. 
it was the difference between a usable aircraft and one that would destroy itself under stress. Theodorson's methods ensured that wings, tails and control systems behaved predictably even in the most demanding flight envelopes. But his influence did not stop at wartime aviation. Post-war aircraft development entered the jet age where unsteady aerodynamic effects became even more critical. Swept wings, thin profiles and higher Mach numbers intensified the coupling between structural dynamics and aerodynamic flow. Theodorson's framework provided the mathematical base that allowed engineers to extend aircraft performance safely into these new regimes rather than learning through catastrophic failure. This is why his work became foundational at NACA and later NASA. Theodorson did not build aircraft. He built the tools that allowed aircraft to be understood before they were built. His research changed aerodynamic engineering from a reactive discipline into a predictive one. For the first time, engineers could design wings not just for lift and drag, but for stability, reliability and survivability under real operational stress. His legacy is therefore not visible on the outside of an airplane. It exists inside every modern aerodynamic stability model used today. Because when aircraft became faster and more powerful, Theodorson made sure they also became controllable.